Welcome to Solutions Studio. This is a free series on C programming language. If you like these videos, please subscribe to follow along with this series. Also, please like and leave a comment and share the video to help spread this series. Hello and welcome to this episode. And in this episode, we have an example of a bubble sort that we are going to use pass by reference in this bubble sort. So in this episode, we are going to have an overview of this program and in the coming episodes, we will go into more details of this program. You can see here that we have this function, a bubble sort. This function will take an array and it will take the size of the array as well. Here in the main function, we have our array that we want to sort. The name of the array is A and it has some 10 elements. Then we are going to print all of the elements of this array in the original order. After that, we are going to apply the bubble sort on this array. And then we are going to print uh, the data items in the ascending order. Then print uh, the elements of the array. And in fact, uh, that the elements of the array has already been sorted using the bubble sort. So here, let's go and see the bubble sort. This bubble sort will receive a constant array and the size of that array. Then here, this is a prototype of the function swap. Let's just forget about this for the time being. Let's go in here. Now to do the bubble sort, we are going to have passes that are going to go through the array. The pass will start from zero. It will go to the number of elements in this array, minus one. For each pass, we are going to go after each element of the array. Each element will start from zero. We will go until the last element of the array. And we will see for each element if the current element is bigger than the element in front of it, then we are going to swap the places of these two elements. So for example, if the current element J that I'm looking at is this 89 and the next element is 68, that means 89 is larger than 68, then we are going to swap the places of these two elements. And in here we have the function swap, which is going to swap the two elements of the array. It will receive the first element as a pointer and the second element as a pointer. Temporary, it will hold at the location of the first element in this hold variable. Then it will assign the location of the second element to the first element and the location of hold back to the second element and the swap will be completed. Now, this might be a lot of information to be able to digest at once. So that's why we have the coming episodes where I'm going to dissect each part of this program for you in the coming episodes. So stay tuned and I will see you in the coming episodes. Hello and welcome back. And let's go and talk about the swap function here in this bubble sort program. Remember that a C programming language always enforces information hiding between functions. So the swap function does not have access to individual array elements in the bubble sort by default. Because the bubble sort function wants the swap function to have access to the array elements so that it can swap them, bubble sort passes each element's address to swap so the elements are passed by reference. Although entire arrays are automatically passed by reference, individual array elements are scholars and are usually passed by value. So that's why the bubble sort uses the address operator on each array elements. The swap function basically receives the elements of the array and basically it applies uh, this operation on the elements of the array. But since it does not have a direct access to the elements of the array, it needs to go through the bubble sort to do the same function. Hello and welcome to this episode. And in this episode, we want to make you notice one of the differences that we have here in our bubble sort function and the fact that instead of passing the array in the normal way that we usually do pass the arrays, here we have passed it in a different way using the dereferencing operator and also the constant modifier. 
In fact, this introduction of the array to the function and also this one is basically the same and interchangeable. So in fact, if I copy this one in here and bring it in here it will not make any difference because those two statements are interchangeable to each other and arrays are in fact passed by reference all the time using pointers and the elements of the array are usually passed using the constant modifier that means the elements are usually passed by value but the array itself is passed by reference and that's why we have used this notation to make it more clear for you instead of the normal rotation that we usually use. So even if we try to swap it, no changes will be brought to the program and the program will still work fine. And that's it for this episode. I hope this has been informative for you and I would like to see you in the coming episodes. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to this episode and in this episode we want to discuss about why do we have the prototype of this swap function here in the bubble sort. So as you can see here that we have the prototype of the swap function in the bubble sort instead of having it here in the top of the program where all of the other functions could use it. So now I would like to tell you that if we place uh, the prototype of the swap function here in the bubble sort, this will restrict a proper access to the swap function and only the bubble sort will have proper access to this function and any other function that will come after the swap function. But if we have other functions that are coming before the swap function, like the main function, the main function will not have a proper access to the swap function. And if we try to use it here in the main function, if we try to use the swap function, even though there is no prototype of the swap function for the main function, the compiler will generate one prototype automatically. And the prototype that the compiler will create automatically for the swap function, it will look something like this, where uh, the return type will be integer and the argument types will all of them will be integer. And you can see that uh, this prototype does not match uh, the real. And that's why if we try to execute this program, we will get a compilation error. As you can see, the program will run, but we will get a compilation error. So finally, I would like to tell you that whenever we are placing the prototype of one function inside another function, we are basically implementing or enforcing the principle of least privilege by restricting function calls to that function. And that's it for this episode. I hope this has been informative for you and I would like to see you in the coming episodes. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to this episode and in this episode we have yet another observation about the bubble sort. Here in the bubble sort you can see that when we have passed the array to this function we have also passed the size of this array as an individual parameter. That is because when an array is passed to a function the memory address of the first element of the array is passed and of course this will not convey the number of array elements. So therefore we must pass the array size to the function for the function to know that how many elements to sort in the array. And there is two benefits to doing this. That is that we can use this function for any other array that we want to and we can specify the size and this function will work for any other array. Instead, if we had defined the number of elements of the array here in the array itself, that would have limited using this bubble sort only to that specific array with that specific size. Now with this size parameter, this bubble sort is basically universal and can be used for any other array that we might have in the program. 
Another observation that we can have is that we have defined the size of the array here with a constant and this constant is basically a global variable and can be accessed by any function inside this program. Global variables usually violate the principle of a least privilege and this can lead to poor software engineering. So you should always use global variables only to represent a very truly shared resources. For example, the time of the day. The time of the day would be the same for any function that might exist in our program and that is truly a shared resource. So we can define that as a constant and as a global variable. And that's it for this episode. I hope this has been informative for you and I would like to see you in the coming episodes. Stay tuned. <laughs>